4-2, patterns and linear functions. So our objective for this section is to identify and represent patterns that describe linear functions. Our essential understanding is that the value of one variable may be uniquely determined by the value of another variable. Such relationships may be represented using tables, words, equations, sets of ordered pairs, and graphs. Okay. So in a relationship between variables, we have a couple of different uh, vocabulary words to describe the variables. The dependent variable changes in response to another variable, which is called the independent variable. Dependent variables are usually your input. Um, or sorry, independent value variables are your inputs. Values of dependent variables are called your outputs. Independent variable is your x-coordinate. Dependent variables are your y-coordinate. Or if we want to use function notation, your f of x. Okay, But we're going to stick with x and y uh, for now for my inputs and my outputs. Okay. So for the first problem here, the diagram below, what is the relationship between the number of rectangles and the perimeter of the figure they form? represent this relationship using table, words, equation, and a graph. So let's go through how we would represent all of these with these different sort of uh, relationships. So let's make a table. Okay. So first, the number of rectangles and my perimeter and my uh, then let's put this into an ordered pair. Let's move this over a little bit. Okay, perimeter, and then ordered pair. Okay. So let's make this nice table. It's obviously not going to be a little bit pretty, but for my first one, we have one rectangle. My perimeter would be six. Okay, add up all the sides, so we would get 14. And so my ordered pair would be at one rectangle, my perimeter is 14 units. Okay, same thing for this one, where I'm add up all the sides, we get 12, 16. So for two rectangles, my perimeter, yeah, sorry, my perimeter is 16. And so my ordered pair is 2 comma 16. For three rectangles, if I add up all the sides, I'm now going to get 18 and 3 comma 18 as my input and my output and 4 we get 20 and it's 4 comma 20. So I look at the this data and I recognize that there's a pattern. For each rectangle that I add my perimeter is going up by 2. Okay, and that kind of makes sense because I'm adding another one there and another one there, right? So if I add another perimeter, this one doesn't become part of the outside anymore, so this stays the same, and I get one more on each, the top and the bottom. Okay. So if I wanted to represent this with words, I could do that by saying multiplying the rectangles in each figure by 2. to get the total length of the top and the bottom sides, and then add 2 times 6, which is 12, to the total length here. Okay? So if we have three rectangles, we would multiply that by 2 to get 6, and then and then add 12 to get uh, 16, or sorry, 18 for three rectangles. Okay? So my equation then, if I wanted to make an equation, I would say that y is going to be equal to 2 times the number of rectangles plus 12. Okay. And then finally, if I wanted to make a graph of this, I could very simply, right? And I could start with one, uh, let's call that 10, 20, right? So that's 1, 14, 2, 16, 3, 18, and 4, 20. So I can make the graph, it looks kind of like that. Okay, not the prettiest graph, but one, two, three, four. Let's look at a got it problem. 
in the diagram below, what is the relationship between the number of triangles and the perimeter of the figure they form? Represent this graph, table, words, equation, and graph. Okay, so same thing, one triangle, triangle, perimeter, ordered pair. Okay, my triangle, one triangle gives me a perimeter of uh, 10. So that's one, 10. Two triangles gives me a perimeter of 14. Three triangles gives me a perimeter of 18. And four triangles, whoops, four triangles gives me a perimeter of 22. Okay, and you can get that simply by adding up all these different numbers, right? Four, four, 16, four, 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 four is a 16, 19, 22. Okay, so now I have to figure out what the formula for this particular situation is going to be. And I can see that if I multiply the number of triangles by something and then add something, I'm going to get my perimeter. So, well, for each triangle, I'm adding another four units as I put the triangle on the top or the bottom, right? So this one had a four there and two threes. This one has two four and two threes. This one has three fours with two threes. This one has four fours and two threes. So we're going to say that Y is going to be four times the number of triangles plus and for each one, we always have these two threes. So it's going to be plus six. Okay. Kind of hard to see the formula, but you get a little bit better as we go. Okay. So for part, for part B, <clears throat> suppose you know the perimeter of N triangles. What would you do to find the perimeter of N plus one triangles? Well, clearly... If we add, as we add one triangle, we're going to add another four units. So as we have n triangles to go to n plus one, we're going to add four units. Okay, so we're just going to add four. Okay. How does, so for part C, how does your answer to part B relate to the equation you wrote in part A? Well, if all I'm doing is adding four units to each one, then the four X part of the equation means that every triangle, the perimeter, every triangle that you add is going to increase the perimeter by four. If you know the perimeter of N triangles, then one more would just give me four units. Okay. Sorry about the background noise. So you can describe the relationship in part one by saying that the perimeter of the perimeter is a function of the number of rectangles, right? Because it depended how many rectangles we had to get the perimeter. And for the triangles, the same thing. The perimeter in the, in the gutta problem was a function of the number of triangles. So a function is a relationship that pairs each input value with exactly one output value. You have seen that one way to represent a function is with a graph. A linear function is a function whose graph is a non-vertical line or part of a non-vertical line. Kind of, kind of like that, okay? So that is a non-vertical line or a piece of one, okay? So when we have some sort of function, right? My independent variable is gonna go into this function. Something is gonna happen. What happens, it doesn't matter. And it's gonna spit out my dependent variable, okay? It's gonna spit out an answer, something. So problem number two is representing a linear function. So the table shows the relationship between the number of photos you take and the amount of memory in megabytes left on your camera's memory chip. Is the relationship a linear function? And describe the relationship using words, equation, and graph. So is this a linear function? So we can tell by comparing the inputs and the outputs. So for each input, right, we are going up by one. Okay. So 
that is good. We're going up by a constant number of units. The independent variable x is increasing by 1. While the dependent variable each time is going down by 3. When you have a situation like this, when the uh, y is constantly going down by the same amount, this will be a linear function. So yes, this is a relationship is a linear function. And if each input is paired with exactly one output, I can tell that this is a function. So as long as we didn't have 0 was 512 megabytes and 1 was 512 megabytes, this is going to be a function. To make an equation, I now have to figure out how to represent this. Well, my output is going to start at 512, and then we're going to subtract something off. We're going to subtract 3 megabytes for every picture that I take and there will be my function. And then to make a graph, graph, I don't want to go too, too crazy with the graph here, but, you know, call this, I don't know, let's call this like 520, and then, you know, 500, and then we get a nice little break here to get down to zero, and one, two, three, four pictures. So this is going to be uh, one, zero pictures is going to be 512, 1, 519, 2, 3, 4. And you can see we have a nice, beautiful straight line as we go down. Let's look at my got it problem. So for the got it problem, okay, is the relationship in the table below a linear function? I'm going up by one each time. We're going up by two each time, okay? Because we are going up by the same amount each time, this is a linear function, okay? And my equation would be y is equal to, I'm going to start at eight, and each one goes up by two. So it's going to be two times my input, well, that doesn't work for this one, right? 2001 is 2, but I need to get to 10, so I need to add 8. If my input is 0, 2 times 0 is 0 plus 8, good. 2 times 1 is 2 plus 8, 10. 2 times 2 is 4 plus 8, 12, good. It works. And does, for part B, does these pairs, or do these pairs represent a linear function? Well, just looking at this, I can see that this x value repeats itself, and when it does that, it gives me two different outputs. This is not a linear function, and in fact, it is not a function at all. Okay, so this was a pretty short section, just two examples. Um, let's just go through our lesson check real quick. The graph, use the words to describe the pattern shown in the graph. As x goes up by 1, y goes up by 1. As x goes up by 1, y goes down by 2. As x stays the same, y goes up by 1. This is not a linear function. It's not a function. So copy and complete the table for the relationship between the number of squares and the perimeter they form. One square has a perimeter of 4. Two squares has a perimeter of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So three pairs would have a perimeter of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay? And then we could fill out the rest of the table. So 4 would have a perimeter of 10. 10 would have a perimeter of 22, if we count it all the way up there. And then we can ask ourselves, what has a perimeter of 62? And that would be 30 because of the equation that 2 times the number of squares plus 2 is my formula. Okay? So 10 times 2 would give me 20 plus these two more 22. Uh, the amount of toothpaste in a tube decreases each time you brush your teeth. Identify the independent and dependent variables in their relationship. Uh, the number of times you brush your teeth is the independent because 
the amount of toothpaste, because you use toothpaste every time you brush your teeth. So the amount left in the can and the amount left in the tube depends on how many times you brush your teeth. So I could brush my teeth twice a day, which you should, or, you know, three times a day if you had a weird lunch. All right, so you're going to use more toothpaste depending on how many times you brush your teeth. Tell whether each set of ordered pairs in exercise one represents a function. Uh, we said that. I didn't want to graph these, you know, so I just said whether they were a function or not. And does the graph represent a linear function? No, because it is not a line. Right? And that is 4-2 patterns and linear functions.